So it is time for our lightning round sessions. It is noon um, central time here in Nebraska, and it is time for our lightning round sessions at Big Talk from Small Libraries. All right, get, like, their full screen here. You want to start because this is this is showing the PowerPoint. Right. Um, I just wanted to just give you a little brief um, intro. Yes, you are in the right spot if you're looking for the accepting credit cards with Payport. <laughs> um, and my contact information is on the PowerPoint. I decided to try to do this live. So, oh, okay, um, great. Yeah. Oh, brave Karen. Good. <laughs> For anybody who wants to, um, the PowerPoint is available with screenshots and my contact information. Um, but I did want to um, start off with the live logged in part. Um, Payport is a program that is available um, for municipalities and um, other organizations across the U.S. Well, Karen, do you um, want to introduce yourself first? I didn't get to that part. Okay. Who you um, are, I, <laughs> where you're from. <laughs> um, our, this is what, it's our first I'm Nebraska here. presenter. Woohoo, Nebraska. <laughs> and I am from Plasmouth Public Library in Nebraska, a population um, over 6,000 people. And I've been here for about 13 years. I've been asking for credit card ability um, for about 10 to 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, and last year we discovered that um, the, the police department has also been using Payport for five years. So um, we jumped right on the bandwagon and said, let's go ahead and make it available for us as well. Um, Payport is a product of Tyler Technologies. So they have um, a financial software that might be used by your uh, municipality as well. And um, we are going to uh, go through and see a little bit about the program. I know it's being used in Colorado, Idaho, um, Maine. Maine has a program called Inform Me um, that they use uh, Payport for. It's um, available across the U.S and uh, there's no charge to municipalities. So whatever we charge our transactions, uh, the money that we charge comes to us. The portal fee, which is a 2.5% of the transaction, stays with the company. So it's not like we have to pay them anything. We paid them a one-time charge for the swiper and it was $130. So it's um, relatively easy to use. We got trained, we've trained our additional staff um, probably within 15 minutes. Uh, you can accept payments in person or online or over the phone. So we'll show you each of those a little bit. The first thing that you would do is set up your locations. If you have a number of places, to branches, um, departments that take money and for different purposes, you can create multiple locations. We are a single location, so that's all we have. Um, the next thing you would do is create the items. Um, and the items are the things that you accept payment for. So um, it's a little late, slow coming in, but um, the items are the, uh, the patron registrations, um, donations, our interlibrary loan fees, that kind of thing. Um, right now they are in an alphabetic order and you will see that they are numbered not uh, all sequentially that we can see, but what it does is it um, aligns them so that when we get to the cashier stage, um, we want patron registration to be first because we figured, you know, that'll be, that's our most expensive and that would be the most likely. So, um, we have actually placed them in the order that we wanted them to be in. Uh, when you create a new item, you say whether you want it to be um, cashier only, that's in-house, uh, public facing, the online version or both. You can give it a name, you can give it a code, um, and you can say, is it um, set to be permanent? Always the same price. Um, you can also identify that it's free floating, it can be anything that people would like to um, have available. So copies comes in at $1.40 or $23. Um, you're going to just go ahead and say that it's there um, and not, uh, not mm -hmm. a set fee. 
So for our patron registration, um, you will notice that uh, once the system comes around a little faster, um, that it is that we are only in-house. So it's a cashier. We have it preset. It's a $30 fee for um, families outside the city. Um, and so people can't change that. So it's an easy way to um, set up your items. We also have our codes, our financial codes in here so that when the reports get to the treasurer, he knows exactly which fund that that is supposed to be put into. So that helps to have that available for them um, to be able to see that um, and put it into the right fund. Um, we also have a number of different um, users. So we have different people um, signed up. You can actually assign them different roles, whether they're just a cashier or whether they're more an administrative level. And um, that's easily identifiable. You can also identify uh, what their uh, reporting levels are as well as what transactions they will be able to um, take. So if you want them only to, um, there's the ability to ad identify their role. Are they a cashier? Um, you can have location administrator versus organization. For us, it's one and the same. What kind of reports they can run? Can they issue refunds? And then can they um, accept all payments or can they only accept certain ones? So all of that can be set up ahead of time. Um, we set them up originally with a one-time password and then they go ahead and change it um, after the fact, after they logged in for the first time. Um, now, if you put this all together, uh, we actually uh, want to create a transaction here to see what it would look like uh, for the cash register. And it's running a little slow today, so, um, my computer does not have a swiper attached, so that's the only notice that you'll see on that. And we are going to proceed without having the swiper attached. Um, we first of all have to identify is what is this? It's the patron registration. It's a set fee of thirty dollars, so I'm going to add that. Um, if there are additional uh, charges, let's say they also had some copies and they ran a dollar forty, and we're going to add that. Now, for because I don't have the swiper attached, it is adding a portal fee of $1.75. The um, portal fee will not list as $1.75 when we're doing um, real transactions. And I'm going to slip, slip over here to the um, transaction, the PowerPoint, because you can see that this, um, we had one that does have a sales tax. Um, we allow people to purchase books through us from Amazon or where, or Baker and Taylor or whatever. Um, and we do charge and collect sales tax for that. And then the portal fee is only $1.18 here because it's incrementing up. So for the patron registration, that's typically a 75 cent um, portal fee. And we usually tell the people that. So um, when the swiper is actually attached, it will increment properly. Um, it just didn't do that on the online version because my swiper, uh, there is no swiper here. But we can continue to add uh, charges and services. Um, and once we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and say, we're gonna, um, whoops, I didn't like it without the zeros. Um, we're going to um, say, the um, additional part, uh, the additional steps would be, we just click off to the side and we swipe the credit card. Um, it automatically populates the per person's name and the, the card number and such. Um, it is set up so that you can uh, add an email address and it will send an, a receipt to that person. Um, you can also print a receipt later on if you need to. If you have a person calling over the phone and they just want to renew their registration over the phone, you can instead just key in the number on the swiper and it um, will feed it into this form. And otherwise, it's um, just once you hit the submit payment, that is going to um, charge the patron uh, for whatever the uh, charges were. 
if you choose to use the cash or the paper check options, there is no charge, there's no portal fees, but you could use this to record all of your payments. Um, we choose to just maintain our cash register for the paper and cash, um, and we use this for the credit card. Uh, we have, um, I'm going to move off of this because I do not want to create a transaction. Uh, show you a little bit about the reports. Every day I go in and I run the reports of what uh, was done for the day previous. And um, I ask it to just print it out or just to, to list it. I will carry this over to my spreadsheets that have our revenue. This says that there is one patron registration that was taken on the 21st and that the copies, there was one transaction for 1170. So it tallies that and now we know what we took in for the, 20, um, for the 21st. If we wanted to get it for a longer period of time, um, obviously I run this monthly and I send this to the treasurer. It shows we had nine transactions for copies. We had 12 patron registrations so far this month. Um, and uh, it just tallies it up for us and it's a nice little double check for the treasurer when he gets the money. And again, it carries our code so he knows exactly which fund to put this money into. We do have some additional reporting options. Um, the, there's a second transaction report that I send to the um, treasurer on a monthly basis and it will list everything that um, is done for the entire month because I've, I've set it up that way. Um, I'm not gonna have the ability to run that one simply because it comes up with every single transaction, um, the person's name, uh, their credit card number and um, where it, the location, what was charged, um, the status if it failed or closed, uh, a lot of detail on it. And obviously I can't show that <clears throat> because of privacy information. So um, that is all listed on the PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'd be glad to take any questions that you might have. We've been using this since August. We love it. Um, the second day I believe that we had it, someone came in and, and was asking about it and say, yes, now we can actually say, we do have um, credit card payment ability. So my email is in there, my phone number is available. Um, it will be on the PowerPoint presentation and all the slides, screenshots of the slides um, are, will be available on the PowerPoint as well. So um, let we me will know. We will those slides, uh, Karen will send them to me, they'll be included when we put up the archive recording, yes. I will do that, yes. Yeah. So we do have a few minutes here for questions. Um, does anybody have any questions for Karen about this or about um, doing credit cards at your library? Or um, uh, if you've done this at your library, share. Uh, take them in. We've got a couple of minutes. We can answer questions before we go on to our next lightning round speaker. Um, OK, the first question is, do you need to have a, rece a receipt printer or can you print from the computer? So do you need a specific, a special? Piece of equipment for that? Uh, no, you can actually tell it to print right from the computer. Easy, okay. And you can also email it if the person doesn't want to carry out a piece of paper. You just send them the, mm -hmm. uh, the receipt. When you put their email address in, it'll go to them. Great, that's so easy. Um, do you um, Tell the patrons that they are going to be charged that extra 2.5% to use a card. I know that's something that many people are aware of, but you know, some might not be. Is that something um, that you have info about? Yes, we do. Since most of the um, transactions are for patron registrations, because that's our highest price item mm -hmm. um, at $30, we do automatically say it would add a portal fee of 2.5%, or if they're doing the patron registration, we say it'll add 75 cents to the transaction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And then um, a couple of questions about the website for Payport. Um, do you have where, what is the actual website to get started? Um, and do you have the link? Um, someone said they did a Google search and found a couple of different things called Payport. Um, is that somewhere in your slides or? Um, it is not at this point. I will make sure that it gets added in. Um, there is, um, if there's anybody in Nebraska, um, the contact at um, the state level is Freddie Pika, 
Um, and he, I've got, I can send you his contact information if you're in Nebraska. Um, there would be different people for different states. Ah, okay, okay. All right, so we'll look for the, when the slides come out, um, you can get that link. Or if, if someone needs, like I said, it does take me a couple of weeks to get the presentations up, but if you wanted to reach out to Karen, I'm sure she could get you that information quicker if you put up your contact info again there. Um, if you don't want to wait for me <laughs> to get the recording and the slides up, um, reach out to Karen and she can get that to you quick, more quickly. Yeah. Um, and here's another question. Um, do you have a minimum amount they have to spend for using a card? We do, we do not. Um, the, I know we've had a 50 cent um, transaction and it gave it had a penny portal fee. Um, <laughs> I believe I had one a little bit lower than that. Um, might have been one for 30 cents. Um, but yeah, I know that they do take under a dollar. No problem. It can be I'm anything. Not having yeah. to lose anything. And yeah, the fee is what it is, I guess, <laughs> when you do the math. Yeah, most people are accepting of um, portal fees nowadays. It's yeah. standard. And when you say it's only 75 cents for $30, they say, uh -huh, it's nothing. When they're paying that much to begin with, yeah, it's not a lot, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so that was all the questions we had right now. Perfect. Uh, perfect timing, Karen. Thank you so much. Um, I hope this is very useful. I'm glad you were able to get this going at your library finally because I know a lot of people do are all about the cards only now or doing things all virtually. And also I, I like, I prefer if I can get the emails or the receipts emailed to me, the less paper floating around my house, definitely the better. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people um, have stopped carrying checks anymore. Uh, yeah. So if you don't have the cash, you know, we say, oh, but we used to say, oh, there's an ATM, um, you know, over there, but now it's easy because we said, yes, we do accept credit cards. So mm -hmm. we've been real pleased with it. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Karen.